Possibly the best known name in the world of Game Boy turn-based strategy games is Hudson Soft's Game Boy Wars. Sadly, it's also one of the most inconvenient to play. Sure, it has now had the fan translation treatment, but for a series that is so iconic with the Game Boy Advance, to not have had English language versions back in the Game Boy and Color days feels odd in retrospect. It's especially weird considering Nintendo of America would greenlight the release of something like Nobunaga's Ambition, a game with little relevance to the Western world, but not Game Boy Wars. Perhaps it was because of the limited relevance, perhaps this one hit a little too close to home in the war-ravaged world of 1991. Even by this sequel's release in 1998, it might have been a little dicey. I've already reviewed the original Game Boy Wars title that came out in 1991, and honestly, not a whole lot has really changed with this. In 1997, a kinda DLC, if you like, came out called Game Boy Wars Turbo, which sped up the AI a smidge and introduced around 50 new maps, not to mention coming in a natty metal tin. For those of you who haven't watched or can't be asked to watch the first review, I'll recap briefly. This trilogy were follow-ups to Famicom Wars, but really the series didn't gain a massive amount of traction until its descendant Advance Wars on the GBA. It's a turn-based military strategy game where you command either the Army of the Star or the Moon in an attempt to take over the scenario by capturing buildings and killing enemy troops. This was far from the earliest example of a military strategy game, but it was arguably one of the first to make it a big deal, in Japan anyway. This is probably due to its simplicity. There's no in-depth, brain-wracking tactics needed to employ. You can be pretty gung-ho and still do alright. It's a more accessible game than some of the others around at the time. You don't have all of these intricate little pieces with their own skills and strengths. All you have to contend with are tanks, soldiers, warships, anti-aircrafts, and so on. It's immediately obvious just by looking at the icons what the strengths and weaknesses will be. The game plays out on a hexagonal grid where the rows of tiles are offset in such a way that allow a unit to move into six adjacent squares rather than just four. The options are plentiful. You can choose whether each team is controlled by a player or by a CPU, meaning you can have a link cable free two player experience, go one on one with the AI, or even watch a battle play out without any control. You can choose whether to supply your troops manually or automatically. Automatic is more accessible, but choosing manual allows more in-depth tactical play. Pressing A over your base allows you to build a unit depending on your current resource level. Otherwise, click on a unit and move it within its range. You need to capture resources to earn money, which allow you to build the units amongst other things. Typically, this will be the buildings you see. The ones not of a color of either team are currently not aligned to a side and are ready to be captured. Capture as many buildings as you can before the enemy, you should really make this a priority early on. Each one generates money per turn. Money is very important, so make sure you claim it. Not only that, but certain tiles allow you to craft different units. Shipyards can make submarines and warships, airports let you build planes, and so on. The game is reasonably forgiving. You can save at any time with the inbuilt battery. You'll need to as well, because these battles can drag something fierce at times. If the map is a large one, don't expect to be thrown straight into a gunfight. Both armies are going to have to slog their way to each other over many turns. This Game Boy Color sequel to the first game didn't change a whole lot. Number three certainly did, but that didn't materialize until 2001, about a month or so before the launch of Advance Wars. Other than the colorization, the graphics are basically identical. There are 50 plus new maps, but again, it's all much of a muchness. The CPU processing time is now around 30% faster than the already improved Turbo, and marks the main real reason to choose this over the first game. You can also make your own maps and transfer them to friends using that short-lived Hudson Kiss thing. Look, as I said before, Game Boy Wars isn't really my go-to when choosing a turn-based strategy game, and there are a few reasons. Sure, the Japanese is a little bit of a problem, although the most basic hiragana knowledge coupled with their pictures and numbers should be enough to at least tell you what the units are. It's an accessible game, but like I said before, for anyone with moderate strategy game experience, you might find the whole thing just a little too restrictive. Having said all that, Game Boy Wars is actually pretty good, and it started a franchise that turned out to be a big deal, especially on portable consoles. If you're into this at all, make sure you check out Friday's video, where we'll be looking at the real launching point of this franchise.